Hey guys, Sean Little with Vapor Trail Tactical. I've got a product review today. I recently purchased a HK MR556 rifle, and technically I purchased it as a CR556 rifle, which is the competition version rifle. And I have unique experience with this rifle in that I uh, worked for HK for two and a half years, so I got to play with the rifle when it was in its development. And then I also worked for a police department that the SWAT team had the HK416. So I've gotten to have good experience uh, from the beginning of this rifle's development. The Department HKs were 10 half inch configuration and they were in service for over 10 years. Um, they eventually wound up adding the Surefire Suppressor which wound up causing a host of different problems because of the age of the guns. So that the department wound up going and repurchasing the new configuration HK 416A5s and went with 11 inch barrel, the Surefire Suppressor point T2, the Steiner D-Ball A3, and a Geisley handguard configuration. Big changes were lighter barrel profile, an ambidextrous bolt release, and adjustable gas block for running them suppressed. Overall, great platform and the best that money could buy. Why would you need an HK MR556 or 416? Well, after building AR-15s for several years and understanding the drawbacks to the platforms and of the direct gas system, the direct gas system in foul weather conditions, especially maritime conditions or extreme wet weather, causes malfunctions. You get that baby soaked and you're going to have malfunctions with the HK system and its gas piston, you won't have those issues of water clogging the system and causing malfunctions. All right, let's get into the actual review of my HK MR556. I bought it as a competition rifle, like I stated before, and it came in the standard configuration with the rifle, a bag, and the accessories. Compared to my other rifle, the only difference between the two were a little bit of looks and a lot of weight. The HK, the biggest complaint about the HK is the weight of the rifle, which is considerable. It's got a much heavier barrel profile, and then with the additional girth on the handguard, it adds a lot of weight. Even changing out the handguard to the Midwest Industries handguard did not save a significant amount of weight for the rifle. I did cut the barrel down to 14 half inches, changed out to the Midwest Industries handguard, I put in the law tactical folder and added a few accessories to it. Chopping the barrel down from 16 half inches down to 14 half inches wound up being more of a uh, cosmetic look thing rather than a weight reduction item because even though I've made all the modifications to the rifle, it still doesn't feel like it's any lighter. One of the other things you could do is flute the barrel. And there are a couple of companies out there that will... Uh, change the profile of your barrel, but you're going to spend a little bit of money doing that. So one of the first things I got to do is take the rifle to a local three-gun match. I got it. You got about take a hundred and I think it was 150 yard shot, standing unsupported, and then moving over to a tree. Once you got all my gear and equipment tangled up in the tree, trying to change positions. No call. No call. So one of the reasons why I had such a hard time no getting call. consistent hits is I chopped the barrel down to the 14 and a half inches and reassembled everything and put my optic back on and I did not re-zero. So at the end of this match, I went over to the 50 yard zero range and I went up zeroing and figuring out that during the match, I was over three inches off in windage, not really elevation, but just in windage on my zero. So. My misses aren't due to the rifle, my misses are due to my zero being off. So yeah. I went up correcting that and uh, hopefully future videos of me shooting this rifle will uh, have more consistent yeah. hits instead of a bunch Where's of misses. Where's it at? Yeah. Yeah. Right to the, just to the left of the green tree. Uh, 
think you're going over the left Once again, hit, you'll see hit, me hit, shoot hit, a bunch of shots hit. trying to figure out where to hold for windage on, uh, to get hits on target. Anybody notice what my uh, shirt says? All right, let's talk about the modifications that I made to my rifle. The very first thing I added was I added a Law Tactical folding stock. The folding stock that's made by Law Tactical is extremely durable. It locks up super tight, and it's nice and convenient. Um, for smaller bags, you'd have to break your rifle down into a smaller component in order to fit it in, into a bag with the Law Tactical folder. I don't have to do that. It folds up nice, compact, and it's easy to manipulate, and it's very reliable. The very next thing that I replaced was I replaced the handguard. I swapped it out for the Midwest Industries uh, M-Lock rail, and this thing is really super nice. Really like it. The attachment points on it, really easy to attach your Weight accessories. reduction is not significant. They're both 13 half inch rails, and I picked... The Midwest Industries because of the M-Lock features and the aesthetic look of the rail. My final big project for this rifle was to cut it from 16 and a half inches down to 14 and a half. The rifle comes with a 16 and a half inch barrel from the factory so I wound up taking it to Alamo Precision Rifle here in Hearst, Texas and they wound up cutting the barrel down to 14 and a half inches for me. I also added the Surefire War Comp flash hider. Also with the Surefire Suppressor, which gives the rifle a very distinct look. Some of the other accessories that I put on the rifle is the Magpul CTS stock and the Magpul Ford Vertical Rail grip. I also changed out the black HK grip for the tan HK grip. I also put on a uh, Magpul MS2 or MS3 sling uh, has the quick push button releases on it. I run it in a two point configuration. I'll talk about my magazine selection in another uh, section. The optic that I chose for this rifle is the Trichcon AccuPower 1 4 variable optic, and it has the 556 five, BDC reticle in it that goes out to 800 meters. Uh, big reason for choosing this reticle or this optic was because of the reticle. And uh, it is fine enough that I can do precise holds and it has good steady lines in order to do good holds and also do uh, windage corrections. So uh, steady lines go every 100 meters all the way out to 800 meters. They also have a range estimation tool that is actually fairly accurate and came from the ACOG series of scopes. Uh, overall, the length, the size, the weight, and the other features of this optic uh, met my needs. I wound up uh, mounting this into a LaRue SPR 1.5 mount. Uh, it's an inch and a half over the top of the rail. It's a quick release mount, really nice, super repeatable, and works really well. To the right, just a little bit. Go left. Hit! 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 Hit!
。うん。So that was out to 450, multiple targets. Try to do that a little bit faster. Do two shots. Seven. Sixty-six. Twenty-seven. We're starting from high ready. Okay. I'm going to get it under four seconds. That was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got a couple more too. Neck. Got one. Up in the neck. I'm gonna shoot these five and then uh, I'll be done. I'm good. Alright, all in all, this rifle is phenomenal. Uh, shot groups at 50 and 100 yards. This is the group at 50 yards. Did outstanding with five shots, a 77 grain uh, Black Hills match. Went to 100 yards, got roughly an inch, and five shot group. And then went ahead and shot a 10 shot group. And I made a little bit of a windage change at the 10 shot group. I shoot, shot the first five. And then uh, made a windage change and then shot the next five into the same group. So this is 10 shots total with the 77 grain Black Hills. And this is with a uh, Trijicon Acupower 1 to 4 power. All right, guys, this completes my review of the HK416 MR556. Uh, love this rifle. It's been doing really well. I got to do all the modifications that I wanted to to this rifle, so I've been very pleased. Please be sure to like the video in the link below. Subscribe to my channel on here on YouTube and check out my website at VaporTrailTactical.net and also like us on Instagram. Comment below on the video and keep a point of aim, point of impact.